just a little bit longer. What's your go-to karaoke song? I know what it is, actually. Yeah. Senorita. Yeah. yeah give, him, give him some bars. <clears throat> Senorita, I feel for you. You deal with things that you don't have to. He doesn't love you, I can tell by his charm. But you can feel this real love if you just lay in my arms, arms. That's all I got. All right. What do we do again, Chris? This week on the Corpus Animus podcast, I am Max El Hajj, and I'm joined by his fellow African American, Chandler Smith. I'm really happy to be on the show. We talk about the CrossFit Games, our pre existing relationship and how Chandler feels chubby. Yeah, uh, body dysmorphia, check it out this week. <laughs> Let's get it. If you're on the go and you wanna to listen to just the audio version, subscribe to the Corpus Animus podcast on your favorite podcast app. Get better at the sport of CrossFit alongside some of the best athletes in the world in our online training program, The Design. Head over to our website, trainingthinktank.com backslash DSGN to learn more. Yeah, Mike hey check. man. You just two. gonna do this by yourself? One, two. I don't need nobody else. Just me. One pillow. One podcast. Just me. By myself. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. I was dropping some some rhymes and some beats earlier. Hey, get on that mic, dog. I can hit you with the beatbox if you can hit the lyrics. No. Yo, 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 yo. Corpus Animus, gonna have a plan for this. We just freestyling, man. We about to be wildin'. Me, my dog Chan. He kind of reminds me of Stan. You know that dude from Eminem's song. Mm -hmm. But Hope you don't he's gonna yourself. have a better ending. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no Stan endings. No bridges, except for the bridges burned after I roast Noah out here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. I got it. All right. Yeah. Anyways, Noah, good to see you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Glad to have you here, man. Always, serious. always a pleasure. What are you sipping on? Uh, bourbon. Wow. Yeah, it's Kentucky. The day man. before the games. I'm not. Are not you a working. drinker? Never. In my, I've actually never had alcohol in my life. Ever? Nope. Not once. Until Sunday. Celebrate. Celebratory. Is that a true thing? No. Yeah, that's true. They talked you into it? No. Oh, no. no, absolutely not. I wouldn't do it. Oh. My strength comes from not drinking alcohol. I I uh, am very proud of you for that. Thank you, Dad. Noah, have you ever drank? I have. <laughs> I have a few, uh, too many times, probably. Back in the day. It's been a long time. I I would drink. I'd now drink alcohol maybe once a year, if even. What was your go-to back in the day? Vodka. Mm. Just and, straight. And when you say back in the days, was that the accurate days? Ooh. Back in the days, Acura days. Come on, One. come on, come on. Uh, Spaghetti. It's Kanye. It's no, Drake. It's Drake. It's Drake. That's your boy. I was Dang. a cold. Trizzy. I was a cold dude. Now I'm getting back to my ways. Thank you. Sorry, I just needed a little bit of guidance. It, that's okay. So no guidance. Another Drake reference. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the right one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was that. great. You don't know what they oh, do, dog. This one's kind of dope. I have, That's I like the have beginning them. of a rap song. I've got them planned out. These are the ones for you. That one. That one. And uh, this one. So anytime you tell a bad joke, which will be frequently, I will hit, be quick with the buttons. I'm the interviewer. I'm not telling the jokes here. It's all you. I'm asking okay. you the well, questions. You guys are in luck because I'm great. <laughs> It's all a good right, combo. Time to get serious. All right. Have we, th this hasn't started yet, has it? I pressed the, the button that says record. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we're right. going. That was three minutes of garbage. I'm sorry, people. Here we go. So I set you up for failure because I was just texting Noah the other day. I was like, hey, Max isn't here. You want to just step in and interview Chandler? He was like, yep. And that was the end of the conversation. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what I'm supposed to ask. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I, we can probably yeah. wing it and do fine. So y'all have trained for multiple years now. How many? Four or five? Together? Is that what you mean? Yeah. We met in 2016 16 at regionals. And then was it the end of that year that Chandler? Like even a couple months after that. I okay. was out there for uh, July 4th with uh, Bajan. Yeah. And um, we did some exercising. We had a good time. Chandler came down to Miami shortly after we had met at regionals. That was his regionals debut. And finale. <laughs> one, one and done. Yeah. Sometimes it's all you need. One take Drake. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much every year since then, we've been hanging out, training together, building a friendship. 
And hopefully we're both doing this and peaking at the same time in our athletic careers. Seems to be that way. Things have, uh, we both improved a lot. I haven't improved, uh, to the same level, but it's been yeah, cool yeah. To, for both of us to, to grow and learn. You probably have well. actually improved more exponentially than this I have true. in terms of like where you are at to where you are now in yeah. a short amount of time. That's a good point. Cause I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's still some things I'm terrible at, but yeah, that's a, that's fair. Which button? Um, it was a me joke. So hit the orange. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> works. Thank you. No, no, no. You guys are too kind. That's the starting one. So right. did you well, know of Chandler before um, the regionals? I don't know. I don't know why I would have. And I don't mean that in a bad way. No, no. I just like, uh, I think that was when you, you'd been doing CrossFit for how long prior to competing at 2016 regionals? Uh, well, 16 was the first open that I had finished and submitted everything for. So, but you'd been doing it for a handful of oh, years yeah, prior. I've been doing it for like six years in between like wrestling seasons and stuff. So um, how you may have known me is uh, I won the Memorial Day Throwdown in Kansas City uh, CrossFit Lee <laughs> Summit. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. No, no, that was a big deal. Um, that it. was my first partner competition, and I won that. Wow! So, Wasn't that with Brooke Wells or something like no, that? No, no, no. That was that was slightly later. Down the I road, did, did not win that. Mm, one. Dang. I tried really hard, and that's what what's the common denominator me. there, Brooke? I don't you win one without her, hmm. and then you team up with her, and all of a sudden you're not winning anymore. Maybe that, that's not good because I've been training a lot out in uh -oh. Nash Vegas. <laughs> It's kind of a continuation. So like, since we met, that kind of kicked off my whole, uh, we met through Kirk and Kirk Gibson was like uh, Atlanta Kirk guy. smash, Kirk smash, hashtag smash athletics. He uh, is a local like Atlanta guy. And I was out at Fort Benning, Georgia, which is a couple hours away. And I knew I needed to travel to be around guys who were better than me for exercise. And so I was going to hang out with him every weekend. And then he's very strong. He's real strong. And Kirk introduced me to Noah. And then, so I went down to Miami to train out, train with you. And then, I've kind of never stopped training. And like, even this year it was mostly in Nashville with uh Brooke and will that squad, but traveling to train and not me where it's at. Bailed on me. Not allowed to go there. 250 mile radius around Fort Canucks and Miami is, is outside of that radius. Just barely, just barely 252. So, uh, yes, it has been a four year friendship thus far, I think, and hope that there are many more to go. I give you another four at most, but yeah, that's I'll take it. Okay. Um, so I'll take the reins here. I'm going to ask Chandler some questions now that everybody has the background on our relationship since your 2016 regional debut, give everybody a quick rundown on what your CrossFit career has kind of looked like. Okay. It's been a very, uh, tumultuous experience. Um, <laughs> stock was rising after 16, 17, won the Wadapalooza team division, which at the time was a big deal. Um, shortly after that, I did this thing where I decided to lose part of my finger because I felt like I needed a comeback story angle. Mm, which, it was purposeful. Um, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, actually pretty strong. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 It was well done. all intentional. Like me and my team, you know, we'd planned it for a long time and it was, it's a sacrifice you have to make for greatness. So I wasn't really troubled by it. Um, then the 18, I chose to be deployed, but not a real deployment. I just wanted to go hang out in Bulgaria. It's beautiful. <laughs> if you love things that are ugly and we had a great time there for nine months. Shout out to all the Bulgarian fans listening. <laughs> Yeah, my bad, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, there was some good stuff there. Sorry, anyway. After I got back from Bulgaria, um, I started training again and did a couple sanctionals team. Went to Dubai, went to Wadapalooza, we did well. Did halfway decent enough to qualify for Rogue, which I did the qualifier workouts here. Did you that like was, team? I love team. Yeah, I'm all about it. But However, know. in the midst of all of that team stuff, you did in 2019 at the Rogue Invitational. That's when I qualify. Qualify for the CrossFit Games individually for the first time. Yes. And then again now for the second time, 2020. Yes. Via the, the open. open. Last guy in. Yes. That a boy. Yeah, barely. Last one, best one, they say, right? Last set, fast set. They do say that. I it's heard that it's unrelated, but they say it. Yeah. Cool. So games year two, feeling good. Like I should. Yeah. Like you should. Do you want to go take a quick walk around the neighborhood? The neighborhood? Yeah. Maybe should. later. Um, and how are we feeling? This season has been obviously quite unique relative to the past. How has everything going on in the world impacted your 2020 season? Training has been different than it would have been normally because I've had to train a lot more on my own. But within 
um, the training situations that arose because of everything that's happened this year. I've actually, I think I found some more effective strategies for training and it also helped. I think the, the biggest breakthrough I made last year was kind of working on the mental side of things. And you were present for a lot of that, like between you and Dex helping, um, me kind of see the power of how that had the ability to affect my physical performance. Mm -hmm. I was able to use that in rogue and then the games and like kind of work to continue to improve upon that. And, uh, like trying to just stay positive no matter what the situation is. Cause there were some things that were probably objectively bad situations that were going on, but really forcing a perspective that only looked for the, the benefits and positives of mm -hmm. whatever situation I was in is kind of a, a consistent theme, how I view things through quarantine. And I think it made it to where that manifested itself in reality. And I, over the course of this year, amidst the distractions, things getting canceled, things getting postponed. There hasn't ever been a time where I felt like I, haven't still been improving. Mm. So that's really cool for me to see, because like you said, there was a point in time where you were very self deprecating. Like, um, anytime we were going into a workout, you had already, I, I don't know for you, if it was an excuse ahead of time to say like, Oh, you're going to smash me on this one. Even if it was something that you would do relatively well on, you maybe had that backup. Like you, you said that it wasn't going to be a good one for you, but I do remember always thinking, man, this guy has a lot of potential. And I think if he could start to believe in himself a little bit more, be a little bit more positive about the situation, then it could help. And it definitely seems like it has so far. Yeah. Still learning, obviously. And there's times where, uh, I default back to kind of my old ways a little bit, but yeah, I think we all have doubts, yeah. but, um, for the most part, being able to look more at the positives and have that perspective shift is something that I, you and I both talk about doing and are able to implement. And I think it helps a lot with everyday life and being a competitor. It does. And I think that's a big reason too, why I decided to be here, right? Like you have that energy about you folks here have that energy about themselves as well. And when you're around other folks, that makes it a little bit easier for you to stay even kill if that's not like your, mm -hmm. your personal tendency. So kind of, I think we're a little bit stronger together and I've always had good experiences here at think tank. So, yeah, I agree that the reason that we ended up here because, uh, how long has it been since they announced the games would be in this format about a month, okay. maybe more. They announced that basically there was going to be a virtual CrossFit games part one and that we wouldn't be able to do the workouts together necessarily. So this weekend we have to do them one at a time, but there was no restriction as to whether or not you could get together with other athletes. So almost immediately you and I called each other, text each other, um, and got Travis on the line too, because we were going to do a pre games camp out here before they had broken it up into this two part series. We were just going to come out around this time anyway, train together for whatever the CrossFit games looked like in September or October. Yeah. So when they announced this change, it was like, all right, we were already going to do that. Let's go ahead and follow through and do th all the workouts together, even though they're not really necessarily together. I think it's still pretty close and I think it'll still be something that works in our favor. So I'm excited yeah. for it. I think we got a good, real good situation. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm thinking that the energy here is going to be better than it would have been if I stayed in Miami and did it by myself, if you were out in Fort Knox and if Travis was here by himself. So I think we got a good setup. Um, How did y'all decide who's going first and when? So there were four time blocks and we actually had a, it was a bit of a tricky decision at first. Hold on for context. If you're listening to this tomorrow is day one of stage one for yep. us. Oh, sh I got to get right. <laughs> <laughs> we're out. Yeah. So tomorrow is day one and there are only two days of competition. And on each day, there are two time windows that you have to complete workouts. We decided that because there were three of us, we could rotate through the first three blocks who would go first kind of to set the tone for the workout. The person that goes last obviously is getting to watch the other two go take notes, rest a little bit extra. And then by the time we get to that fourth block, because we are friends and a team essentially here, whoever is the closest to being in one of the top five qualifying spots is going to have the advantage on that fourth and final time block to be able to go last. So they have more rest time and can watch the other two guys go, Yep, which I think is cool. I think that is nice that it speaks to our friendship. You know, we're, we are, 
competitors and obviously I would like to win. I, I want you to do as well as you can be, which I, it, but not beat you. Right. So I, I would like to come in first and I want you and Travis to come in second and third, whatever that, but I'm sure you guys are the exact same way, right? Like we all want to win, but we also want to see each other succeed. Not true. I've adopted a very Cal not <laughs> approach to his Ricky Bobby where I'm just real cool taking second all the time. So I appreciate I'm that. just here for good man. You on. That's not true. Not at all. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can out of the top five qualifying spots to the CrossFit games, it would be obviously most ideal if we took three of them, you, me, and Travis, you, me, Travis, Reggie, Jay-Z, Tupac, Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. Yeah. Andre from outcast. <laughs> yes. You know, he's pretty list. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, corrupt, nah, uh, did we say Nas? Jada, corrupt Nas and then me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, and then me. That's what Again. it says. What about Dylon? That's he's the top five. Yeah. So he was. I wonder if that list still holds up for Eminem. Corrupt, corrupt, corrupt has no business being on that list, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, don't I don't even know who that is. From. He's like a West Coast guy. Mm. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about the games. We've talked about this quarantine situation. What we haven't talked about that people who are potentially unfamiliar with you and your story is your job. So prior to being on the army warrior fitness team, which we'll have you tell everybody about you were in the army and training was kind of like a side gig for you, right? Like you weren't able to prioritize it as much now within the last, what has it been a year, maybe more, you've been able to prioritize training because of the army warrior fitness team. Can you yeah. tell us about yeah, that? The army uh, decided to make a, a pretty cool gig within recruiting command where, um, we have a team of athletes who do, that's the warrior fitness team. And we work within various fitness spaces to, one, like be able to tell our army stories of what we did um, in our time and like kind of more conventional units uh, to folks who are interested in joining the army because there's a lot of options available. I think if you're just watching movies and maybe you only think that there's there's trigger, combat. trigger pullers and yeah. combat all the time, but there's all sorts of uh, jobs, roles. We got doctors, we have people who are technical specialists. And Are there any rappers like, in the army? Um, no, but that's my, that's my next actually gig and we can get to that later. I'm going nice. to try to become Sorry. the first army rapper. Um, Very cool. But we've got like all sorts of stuff. So we go in and we tell our story, but also too, we're around fit military aged males and females. Um, and so those are the folks who like the people who are showing up to CrossFit competitions, people who are going to Spartan race. Those are the folks who are probably like most likely to be able to join the military and do well. Mm -hmm. They have an understanding of team building skills, like setting goals and things like that. So those are the folks we want. If you're building a good team, you know, you want to find the best possible people to join the team. And so you guys are almost like a recruiting tool by being successful athletes within your sports, CrossFit, strongman, Spartan, all that kind of stuff. Hope, hopefully the athletes that you're competing alongside will potentially come and join the army. Yes. And then even if, it, if they don't join, there's kind of, you know, second and third order effects of people who are watching, they mm. see us, especially for performing, you know, honorably we're engaging where we show how hard we work and everything. Then like they see those qualities and at the very least they have an, a better opinion of the army. And if you have a better opinion of the army that like, that does a lot to bridge civil relations. So when you're your son down the road or your daughter down mm. the road is thinking about joining a branch. You tell them to join the army instead of going to the Marines to eat crayons full time or, you know, joining the Navy to lose to army football and wrestling. So kind of helps yeah. make those choices. Nobody wants that. Absolutely not. That's cool. Um, and have you enjoyed now being able to make training your priority and your focus? Is that mostly your full-time job now is to be an athlete? Yes, mostly. Um, there's, some other more administrative parts of the job too, but mostly I get to train and uh, I've, I feel like I've benefited from the focus. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Cause um, last year I'd been pretty much still just doing the normal army thing and was able to do what I did at the games. And I'm hoping to be able to do a little bit better, but either way, the work I've been that I've put in has been of a higher quality. And uh, I think I've been more consistent in some of the areas that I didn't have time to learn about or to pay as much attention to. So um, that's been good just for growth as an athlete and, you always like to see it borne out in the results, but yeah, I can't really control that. What are some of those areas? Would you say that you have had market improvements in, in this past year? And, and what would you say are some areas that you still feel like you need to improve on a bit? Nutrition as of late has been something that I've worked on. I've never, ever paid more dialed in. Yes. Never cool. paid attention to it. It's ever since I stopped wrestling, I said, I'd never cut weight again. So mm. I like was very indignant that I was going to continue to eat Reese's every day <laughs> for the, hundred percent. I mean, that, that is often a, an, I don't know if issue is the right word, but wrestlers usually deal with some sort of food or weight 
issue after having cut for so many years and having yeah, to deal I definitely with that. had to ha- have and still continue like had and still continue to have a bad relationship with food. So worked on that. Um, I sleep a lot better now and more consistently. Nice. There's no field exercises popping up where I don't, I miss training for a few weeks, which has been really good. I think for strength, um, because it's tough to do a, like a linear progression if you're missing <laughs> every fourth week, right? You're basically having to go back at that point. But, uh, is that what you guys would have to do just for context? I, Cause I didn't know this prior. You would ha- be, get called out to the field to spend two weeks doing something where you had no opportunities to work out while you were there. Yes. Like, and it, even if it's not the field, sometimes the, uh, we, what we used to call op tempo, like operations tempo, it's a demanding job sometimes. And, um, like for, as far as hours that you need in order to do the job correctly, especially as officers, kind of there's an expectation that you are working to standard and not to time. So if it takes you, if you're working a five to nine instead of a nine to five, that's just what it is. And, um, that can make your training quality and the quantity as well, like pretty mm-hmm. unpredictable. So having uh, predictability in my scheduling and everything has been, has done wonders. And I think the, especially with, with strength, that's always something that as much as I'm like kind of naturally strong and I know my techniques, like I'm not a technical uh, wizard for any of that stuff, but I've you're never you're had a strong the boy. I think I'm strong and I've had the ability to like stay consistent with that in ways I never had before. And uh, so I'm definitely as strong as I've ever been. Which yeah. Is, that's awesome. Do that too. We'll see if the uh, one rep max front squat proves as such tomorrow. I hope so. Are you going to PR that so. tomorrow? I hope so. Yeah, that would be great. I've never front squatted 400 pounds and until that tomorrow. would be the goal until tomorrow. Yep. You're going four plus. So, hope so hopefully those are good numbers for both of us. Um, regarding the games, actually one question that I was asked and I want to ask you, I think a lot of people are wondering, is there an asterisk around the games this year. And, and what does that mean to you? Cause I think to some people that automatically meant like it was discredited, right? Whoever won didn't really win or it didn't count as much. I don't necessarily see it as such. I, to me, an asterisk just means that it's different. You know, you're looking mm-hmm. back and you'll remember 2020 as the season that was this, this, and this, what do you think if you were to make it into the top five and podium at the games, is it, as credible as it would have been last year or will be next year. Even operating outside of the self-centeredness of like how I would be in that situation where, cause if I'm in the, if I'm in the podium, obviously I want it to be legit, legitimate, right. but um, I think it is legitimate, right? The nature of the sport is unknown, unknowable. The season last year looked different than the season before, looked different than mm-hmm. the season before, looked different than the season five years ago. So people are trying to say that CrossFit only, especially the games only, works in this pattern. You know, there was a year when Sam Briggs missed the games and she was still like very fit, but she couldn't Hanson walk. And there was no opportunity for to go, her to go again. Like she could have been a sanctional mm-hmm. um, last year. The difference between the regionals and sanctionals format, the game is always changing and being able to win no matter what the rules of the game are, is very important. Um, like last year with the, with the cuts, people were complaining all the time about the cuts. Like that was the name of the game. You can't, if you're playing the game, you can't right. knock the rules if you're not making them. So like, you just got to, Kind of take what you're given, and maybe roll you can help. Yeah, roll the punches. There's it's wasted energy, or there. just pedal without the wheel. Pedal without that's the, the wheel. better analogy. <laughs> that's hard to do unless you're going downhill. Yeah, and then you just you just kind of cruise, but without a wheel. Oh, oh shit! The, I mean, I'm a pedal without the pedal. Oh, okay. Well, that's the uh, that, that's that's not the wheel. <laughs> it's a stationary bike, though. Maybe if you're a soul biker. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, so it's, I think it's just as legitimate. The game's always always different. Now, I mean, if if a whole different group, say like five people who have never podium before are mm. the five there, then I'm sure folks would be upset about it. But I bet the, uh, the top guys, except for Vellner, cause they'll complain, but the <laughs> top five guys will still be like, if it was a different set, they'd be like, it's legitimate test. We just weren't fit enough. They'd yeah. own it. And I say that talking to you and I'm assuming that's what you'd say. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that it's, we talked about this when I did a podcast with Max here recently, that it can almost be even more impressive to be able to, stay consistent and be successful during this season with how many roadblocks there have been. Right. And I I don't know, I would almost give more praise to the person that, and and that's different because that's praise. That's not maybe going directly toward their fitness. It's more toward their mindset and toughness and resiliency, which are maybe all parts of fitness. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I I just chirped Pat, but like to his credit, like he was stuck in his apartment for pretty much the whole time leading up to rogue. And he still went out there and kicked, kicked our butts and that stuff. And like, that's, it's not just like the quality of training. It's he was in his apartment, believing that he was still getting better. And no matter what your situation were, some folks were more fortunate than others. We both had 
access to home gyms and maybe mm-hmm. other folks didn't, but um, you still had like a choice in how you were going to a- attack getting better in some capacity. And uh, it'll be like the results are still going to be the results you earned. I think. Can we rewind when you, when, when this all, let's say we go back to when it was like, Oh, this is actually going to be scary. You know, quarantine and, and COVID. It was like, Oh, what is this? Yeah. What is was this your the initial rewind button? More Close enough. Yeah. yeah. What was your initial mindset when that was happening? Did you stay calm and collect or was it like a, you kind of eased into it? Um, I definitely did not stay calm and collect. Uh, <laughs> I doomsday prepped for sure with oh, food. I kind of remember that. Still kind of noshing on my rice from then, sadly. Like, shouldn't have got this much rice. But on a, on a more serious note, I was like, all right, what's the, the most actionable thing I can do from this? And in my mind, that was start to get gym equipment. So um, I was able to sign some equipment out from Fort Knox, which was cool. Uh, I bought some stuff, bought some horse stall mats, and then within like, a month I had a fully outfitted, uh, home gym. What was the phrase that we both kind of said right at the beginning of quarantine? Do you remember? Ah, I wish I didn't check the text. I believe that we had kind of both come to the conclusion that we would prefer to stay ready rather than having to get, get ready. ready. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So just continue to train as if the games were coming up and whatever unfolded, we would be prepared for it rather than sitting around and waiting for them to announce something and then having to scramble to get ready for that. Yeah. And I think we both did a good job you, of that. I think you did an excellent job of that. Like you specifically with how you like- specifically. You specifically, <laughs> we, uh, okay. Maybe we both did. Like we both had a pretty good showing at rogue. And, um, I think like that at this point in t- you're heckin fit right now. And I think like to this point in time, That's a last shirt. year, heck and you're heckin fit. <laughs> we'll Shout out it. the Canadians. That's another Canadian thing. I'm stealing Is everything. It? Yeah. They okay. always say heckin, um, like, you know, building into the games last year, I think you're fitter than you were at that point La- last year. I, from at least it's so hard to gauge. I never tough, know. But like, yeah. I feel like compared to you say you are as well. Um, yes, but you're still, I think a little fitter and that's not me like being trying to like pump yeah, you up. Yeah. We just, we have workouts, there's times and everything. Uh, like, cause I got you a rogue last year and then we yes, were probably trading indeed. back and forth before the games. We haven't been trading back and forth as of late. Um, and I still feel like I'm pretty fit and I don't know. We, for context so that he's not, uh, making himself sound unfit. There was a day recently where you were like, my hands are torn up send me what you're doing today. If it doesn't involve too much grippy stuff and I'll do it with you. And I gave you my two workouts that I had and you beat me on both of them. And you had said that you were unfit. And so the fact that you were saying you were unfit and you beat me on both of the workouts that I randomly sent to you, I was like, Oh God, I'm in trouble. It's mind games. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dang. That that's messed in, up. In touch. I don't know. It's some, some yeah. days are good. It's when you have infinite movements, you know, there's yeah. some things that you're going to get a sweet roll. Like, Maybe, uh, you let's, get into the let's talk about that really workouts. quick. Yeah. This weekend, like, how do you feel so far at the six of the seven events that have been announced? Which ones are you looking forward to? Which ones are you doing a little bit more damage control? Okay. Uh, I'm going to caveat this too, by saying like, I've in this, I hope this doesn't sound goofy, but I'm like trying to be very intentional with how I'm viewing the workouts. Cause I don't want to hype them up. I think that's something I would do if there's, I don't, you know, I don't love thrusters. Right. But like, I could focus on that part of it, or I can focus on the fact that I've worked a lot on them this year. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to do a bunch of friends in the last couple months. So I'm, I'm going to say it, but I like, don't want to really like, I'm not super bought into how I'm going to phrase it, but, uh, damage control, probably Fran. I never have moved or the first one. Um, I never have moved through that type of stuff. Super, super fast. I understand what you mean in that regard. Like you don't like to speak that into existence and say that you're not going to do well on something, but the reality is like in the past for me, I've not won endurance based or strength based only events. I've not won them. That doesn't mean that I'm going to perform poorly, but in the same exact way that you're looking at workout one, I'm looking at the row in the front squad. I'm like, "Eh, I'm not going to win these, but I I just need to find a way to do well enough. Yeah. It it is interesting too, to that. Uh, that's how you have to view things. There's like the, the element of you acknowledge what's, what's reality, what reality is. Like we have folks who are testing the workouts for us mm-hmm. and it'd be nice for them to test the front squat in the row, but it's not going to change right. the front squat in the row. And maybe there's some strategy that's going to affect how we do the, the thrusters and pull-ups, but in the end, we're going to do the thrusters and pull-ups the best way we know how to. So I'm going to do the thrusters and pull-ups the best way I know how that's to. That's event one. Uh, and then hit the handstand hold because it's something that hasn't been tested. Uh, there's no data to pull from there to know mm. if you're good relative to the field. Yeah. Back. I have no idea. I if, know you're good relative to the field that, you know, well, that I just, but I mean, we don't, because it hasn't been tested. I don't know if there's a dude out there that's going to hold it for three minutes or if 
ev- like nobody's going to get more than two minutes. You know, it's so hard to tell. I guess we'll find out obviously yeah. on Saturday, but it'll be really interesting to now have some data and look at like, okay, the average handstand hold amongst games athletes is about a minute and a half. The high end, there was somebody that did three minutes and there was one guy that couldn't even make it for 30 seconds. I hope the <laughs> average is not a minute and a half. <laughs> we shall see. No, I don't think so. But so those are your two like unsure about events. Which ones are you going to crush? Uh, I always like deadlifts. So there's deadlifts and strict hands and pushups, whichever forever normal ones. So that one should be halfway decent. And uh, traditionally I've been decent at burpees and uh, heavy overhead squats ever since the 2016 regionals when I sucked at them and spent a whole summer mm. just doing them. So um, I think I'll do okay at both of those and everything else. Uh, I think folks like, I think I'm stronger than I am front squat wise. That's going to go well, but it's not going to, I mean, you're, you're thinking about hitting maybe like four thirty. That's a big front squat in my opinion. I don't know. Again, I don't know what everybody else's front squat number is. So I guess we'll find out, but I think that that'll be up there to be able to go four plus is going to be top tier. Okay. Well, I, I hope think. so. And, and then two for the row, like, you know, there's not a lot of pure capacity tests. Uh, I like, pure monostructural capacity test that we do. It's always like, you know, a thousand meter row every Into 30 seconds this do or, some whatever, yeah. or something. So, yeah. um, you know, I think, I hope I'm fit there, whatever. Yeah. I've trained hard. I've trained as hard as I could made the changes. That I think I need to. So, yeah. And do you feel having said that, that no matter how things go, that you will be able to be, I don't know if satisfied is the right word, but content is almost the exact same word at the end of the weekend, no matter how it shakes out, because, you know, I've trained as hard as I could. I was as fit as I needed to be. And I went out and did what I could. I, yeah. Right now it's all just hinging on the doing what you can. So it's execution. The execution. Yeah. yeah. Like not making any silly mistakes, getting caught up in trying to chase a score that I know I, I can't chase from you or Trav or uh, coming out too hot or doing, you know what I mean? So if one of those things were to play out, that would be the only thing that you'd be bummed about. Got it. But even then it's not like I'm actively trying to sabotage myself if that happens. So, um, you know, so the reality is that we're not robots and you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. If you make it, learn from it and be better from it going forward. Amen, brother. Well, we did get some questions from the IG. If you want to go through some of those right quick. The Graham cracker. Let's do it. Um, from Brewer A. Dobb. Will you cry if one of the wads is double Fran? We already know. Uh, never workout. mind. <laughs> maybe, I mean, he's, maybe he didn't see it. It is. It's yes, Fran plus. Did. Yeah, it's extra front. I did cry. Yeah. Brewer. Um, <laughs> create a workout that you think would be perfect for your strength as an athlete from Meg Phil Fit. These are all for first. you, my man. Are they really? Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So it has to be an obnoxiously heavy deadlift um, that would automatically weed out most folks. Um, Give us a number. Okay. Five rounds, five reps at 500 deadlift. <laughs> you can do 50. that touch and go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't you just do 500 for 10 or something like that? Yeah. In a few months, That's come crazy. back. We'll do a throw down with whatever you're about to say. Are you really? All right. Five at 500. Um, I like these things to be nice for like how the numbers make sense. Uh, 15 bar facing burpees and 25 cow C2 bike. Five rounds of that <laughs> for me. <laughs> oh, cause I can't pull that deadlift. Well, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, why did I do that again? Didn't mean to. Anyway, that sounds like a gnarly workout. But maybe one maybe throw crush. 50 GHDs there too. Give me 250 Ooh. GHDs in the workout. And <sighs> yeah. I'm sweating. I'll have rabdo for sure, but I think I take Worth anybody it. on that. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. So if anyone wants thing. to put up a score, who not, do you, I will not do that workout. No. Who do you think would be the only person that could hang with you on that? If one comes to mind, Vellner. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty good. GHCs. And he can deadlift that five times. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Cool. All right. Next question. Juan wants to know, how do you approach your nutrition for training and competing? Um, poorly would be my <laughs> traditional answer. Uh, normally. What did you switch up? You said you're paying more attention. What's yeah, one so- thing that you're. Oh, what's one? Um, I started doing macros just like every other CrossFit athlete. And but did makes, you notice a big difference? Yeah, I got super shredded. It was cool. Nice. Um, so that was shredded. What do you mean you got super I was going to say, wait a minute. Pretty jacked nah, and shredded. I was, I was like, do you think there's a significant, like if you look back at photos, could you pinpoint like, all right, right here is where I kind of made the change. I remember last summer, last summer I was the, the fat kid at the pool. I had my shirt on the whole time I was in Miami. You've never been a out. fat kid ever. Bro, I didn't buy, I felt like I didn't look good. And so I kept my shirt on for the whole training camp out at Noah's. <laughs> I never told anybody that till now. 
It was Mike Concha. I love that the rest of America or the world gets to hear this though. <laughs> yeah. No, true. but yeah, I mean, we have like, everybody's got, you, you, there's times too where you yeah, feel like- No, for sure. I, I think that that is good as a reference point for people. Like no matter how jacked and shredded you are, like everybody that's watching this would look at Chandler and I'm not saying this to blow up your head and be like, that dude is an action figure. Like there's not one thing that you could see on him that isn't muscular and whatever. And, and still he sometimes is self-conscious about that. That's crazy. I have felt the same way about myself where I'm like, ah, I feel a little pudgy today and I'm a little more embarrassed than on another day. And somebody will hear me say that and be like, that makes me angry that you said that. Shut up. You know, that's it's always relative. Yeah, for sure. Um, um Jordan Dorman, Brandon's wife hey. wants to know what's a typical day like for you as far as balancing training with your work responsibilities. It fits in pretty nicely at the moment. So we normally, when, when things are humming along, you know, like not in a, in a goofy kind of mm -hmm. uh, work from home mm -hmm. quarantine situation, we normally are in at uh, first sessions eight and then we go from eight to nine 30. We'll do whatever work stuff we've got for the day um, administratively slash doing programming slash reviewing results for me personally. Cause that's my job on the team. If we have any meetings or anything, they'll go down before 1230, 1230. We start warming up for the 1300 session. We go Come from closer to the mic 13 to 1600. Uh, and then once we're done with that, you knock out whatever other tasks will come through for the day and finish it up. So. Do you prefer a more routine day or a, Hey, just get it in when you can. Like, do you like it to be relaxed or kind of more in line? You know what you're doing when you start the day? I very much uh, am an inline person. I've made a goofy schedule even for us uh, here for the games. I just like that's helpful having structure. Sometimes it is, but sometimes you gotta learn to go with the flow. Yeah. And as part of my civilianizing process, oh, I'm getting out of the army. Ha, there it is. I haven't Whoa. Said that. I was oh. gonna say something about it, and I was like, Oops. I don't want to put him there. Uh, cool. Yeah, February 21st is my uh, my last day in the army. So um, I'm like trying to learn how to be around normal people who don't live by army rules all the time. So, all right, next question. Um, what have been your biggest struggles since you started in the sport? And that's from Christian. It's a good question. Uh, I think you can answer that two ways. So there's like the physical side of struggles, things that like I'm movements. I'm not good at. I have never been an awesome gymnast, specifically high rep pulling. So a bunch of pull-ups or chest bars in a workout. I, uh, I tend to blow up on those pretty quickly. And then um, handstand pushups, like that's another big weakness. I've improved handstand walks and muscle ups to where I'm like decent. I'm not going to get blown up in those all the time, but um, those two are like pretty big weakness. I see those workouts come out and I'm, I get kind of worried, but uh, I think the mental side is the thing that I've had to work on the most. And just, I had a very defeatist attitude in wrestling. There's always rankings and there's kind of this, uh, there's there, you can't have a mentality where you see a guy who's ranked higher than you and you're automatically you know, like you've, you've lost the match for you've you got discount out. yourself. Yes. Yeah. And I did that a lot in college. Um, the, the best guy I ever beat was a two time all American. I didn't know he was two time all American. I went out and wrestled him like he was anybody else. I beat him. And then I was like, afterwards, you know, you learn how good this person is. And then I probably would have lost that match. If I would have known that. And so trying to break some of those habits I've had mentally has been the hardest thing. And just, uh, giving myself credit to trust that the work I've put in is valid. And, um, like I'm not in these positions by accident. I'm not a fluke trying to get over the the imposter syndrome that I think all of us feel at different points where you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I just kind of got lucky here or whatever. That's something I struggle with a lot. So it's a, it's a continued work in progress, but yeah. Nice. Do you have any of that? Any of the Do you ever, like, imposter, imposter syndrome? syndrome? I think at first I did. Um, but having been in the sport now at the games for seven years, I, it, it, you kind of start to feel that sense of belonging a little bit more. Um, but there's definitely always when you get to the tippity top, you know, that's when you start to wonder if you still got it. And uh, there's never a consistent period of time where, and then I don't know if this happens to you. We just had an awesome training camp a couple of weeks ago and I felt great, but two weeks has gone by and my training has still been good. I just haven't tested myself. And so now I'm starting to get these doubts. Like, do I still have it? Did I lose a little bit of fitness in two weeks? Yeah. Is that possible? I, that just always is on the, in, in our minds. I think I, that that's something that happens to me a lot too. And I always have, uh, I kind of have this thing where I go back to the, the most recent win I've had, or as an, mm. uh, an effort that I was like really exceptionally proud of or that I know is good relative to the field. And if I can anchor myself on having really like one of those moments a week, it'd be nice to have one every day, but I don't think that's realistic. I just like can always look back to be like, all right, so last 
for on Monday, I did a workout with Brooke and Will and them. And I feel like I competed really well and I executed well, I performed it well. If I can be with four other folks who've been to the games a couple of times and then compete that hard at that workout, I'm probably pretty fit. Yeah. And that gives you enough confidence. Gives me enough to go on to, you know, go into this or however the, the most, like whatever the, the next thing that I'm working towards is. So I always try to anchor myself, something like that. I don't cool. know if that helps. Yeah. Me. Like it, it does for sure. Someone wants to know what shirt size you wear. I wear a large. Uh, do you wear a large? I do wear a large. Oh, shirt. then I got a present for you. Oh, I got a beach house shirt that I never wear. Beach house. Let's go. Yeah. Nice. What a, t- a king of taste. I need to bring you a vinyl. There was a, there's a vinyl shop out in Roswell uh, that I walked through. But Bojo? I uh, maybe. I don't know. I just stopped through and I was like, I should get CTP something because he's the king of the band shirt. Do you think that people think he wears a medium because he's so jacked that his shirts are all very tight? So it looks like maybe they're smaller than they are. I, I hope would. not. Man. I haven't worn a medium since high school. Yeah. Come on, y'all. All right, let's go through some quick ones here. What uh, rapid fire? Oh, here it goes uh, from Mike. Mike McGee. He has three. These oh, are all okay. doozies. Uh, what's your favorite ice cream that starts with the letter J? <laughs> Gosh darn it, Mike. Uh, Think on it. Um, is it true that God gave you glutes for pecs as a joke? He did just like uh, <laughs> just like Wimplow was trained wrong as a joke. That's what happened with my pecs. These are abominations, and I hate them. If I Wait, get, that's a butt on your chest? It, it might as well be. This is Holy way too smokes. much muscle mass. I never not knew. useful for anything, and it bounces everywhere. Well, pretty useful for bench press. You bench what? What's your one rep max? Three sixty five. But when's the last time we benched in a competition? That's useful for, for what? something. I don't know. If I got stuck under a car <laughs> on a on a bench press, yes. Then yes, I'm your guy. Uh, front to back or back to front? Actually, that's a good one. Great Regarding question. what? A front to back. How do you wipe your ass? Front to back. Ooh. Back to front. Noah? Um, honest answer. It starts front to back. Do a couple of those and then finish off. With I don't think the, I have the, mo- the mobility. A little bit of both, to be to honest. Front. Great questions, Mike. I'm still stuck on the ice cream question, to be honest. I don't know an ice cream player that begins with J. Well, actually, he has a fourth one. What's your favorite dinosaur? Uh, baby source because Liam was wearing a onesie that said uh, I'm a baby source. Nice. Like, nope. Good answer. Someone wants your phone number. Nice. Uh, 281. I'll look it up real quick. 330. Eight. Who's your childhood four. role model from quads like Sully? Say it. Just Say one. It. You don't have to pick the one. A one. Um, Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. Ooh. Yeah. What about Barry Manilow? Definitely not Barry Manilow. <laughs> Kind of voice he, like didn't, he didn't run the if he if he could tote the rock like Barry then I would appreciate him. But uh, what sports teams do you support? Uh, it depends. I'm I'm definitely a fair weather fan. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl and I'm from Kansas City, so I feel like I have the right to say that I'm a Chiefs fan, even though I'm a Broncos fan. I'm I was gonna say, wait fan. a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, Daddy, Seventy Sixers are terrible right now too, so I'm cheering for the Lakers. Like I said, I just cheat. I just pick whoever's good. Yeah, I nice. don't really care. You going for Nuggets or Lakers right now? Lakers. My brother's a Nuggets fan, and I want him to squirm. So, <laughs> oh man, I was hoping you were gonna say Nuggs. Nah, man, not today. Uh, Just want Cole to be uh, upset. Um, let's see. Here we go. Uh, which event are you most confident about? You kind of already touched on that. Um, which event is <laughs> most confident? We'll end on this one. It's my how do you how do you manage your hydration? Um, <laughs> carefully. There's a there's an old <laughs> saying: that if you don't hydrate, you dehydrate. And I take the de- the threat of hydration very seriously. So I always make sure I've got a gallon strapped up. I keep that MF thing on me at all times, water bottled up, toting it. That's, and that's what my P sounds like. Cause it's so clear. It comes out. <laughs> all right. Wrap us out. Hey, hit the red button and then uh, wrap us out of here. Wait, can I go back to beatboxing or no? Are you going to wrap on top of this? Okay. Uh, white wrap. The think tank, we got some stuff. We're going to make some big thanks tomorrow. It's rough, but we got all the fitness. And you follow us on Instagram or maybe YouTube. It's just me and Noah. I'm hanging with my dude. And I'm hey. running out of words. Hey. I don't hey. know what to say. So hey. I got to leave. It's time for me to go away. Nicely done, man. Give Doesn't you it suck when you can't drop the mic? <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. There it is. Applause. That's a wrap. Literally it was a wrap. figure. It was a wrap. Well done. Put it there. Hey, thanks for having me. Nice Appreciate you. You know what? You're welcome back anytime. All right. Let's do another one.